Hello, welcome to Mr. Lindsay's Biology Basics. This is the first in a series of videos for higher human biology. We're going to be starting a Unit 1, uh, 1 1.1, Division and Differentiation of Stem Cells. This is the first subunit of the first unit of the Higher Human Biology course. These videos are part of a series. As the series continues, um, you will find as the units go on. So make sure that you uh, keep an eye on the channel so that you can see any uploaded videos in the future. So let's get started then on the very first part of the higher human biology course is the division between somatic and germline cell. And generally speaking, throughout the entirety of your body, there's two overarching types of cells. There's somatic cells, and these are cells that are basically just not everything involved that's not in reproduction. So a sperm and egg cell aren't included there. Somatic cells divided by mitosis, and if you're unsure what mitosis is, have a quick check back to National 5 biology, because that's covered off at the very basics there. The other type of cell is a germline cell. Now, these are known as your gametes, as a proper word there, it's your sperm and your ova. And the stem cells that divide to form these gametes. Okay, I'll come back to talk about stem cells in a little minute. Germline cells divide by mitosis originally, and then produce more germline cells by meiosis, to produce haploid gametes. Now remember the term haploid again comes from National 5 biology. It means one copy of every chromosome, where a somatic cell would have two copies of every chromosome. Now if we have a look at this in this terms of this diagram here, if you were to run with me here, let's just assume right at the very start, fertilization has happened and you've been created. Further, where you're male or female, doesn't matter, that, that cell continues to divide by mitosis. That first cell, that zygote, is somatic in nature because you can't reproduce from that zygote. Over years and years and years, you continue to divide by uh, grow through mitosis. Okay? Until eventually you get to a point where in the future, if you choose to have a child in any of the capacities in the future, that child they, they require the germline cell to produce, and that's where this process here of meiosis comes in down here. Now, just for clarity's sake, meiosis is not expanded in higher human biology. It's only in the advanced higher biology course. If you want to know any more about advanced, uh, sorry, meiosis, sorry, have a look at the advanced higher biology video or take advanced higher biology if you have the opportunity to do so. Meiosis is just slightly, it's, it's kind, it's, to be quite honest, it's very, very similar to mitosis. It just misses a few of the key steps that are in the in the in the whole process of mitosis. To clarify, somatic cells. They are differentiated cells that come from different bodies. Now, I'll talk about that word differentiate in two minutes' time. But a smooth muscle cell, a nerve cell, or ciliated epithelial cell, what you'd find on the back of your throat, these are all still somatic cells. None of these cells are involved in reproduction and the, the core mechanics of it. Okay? But again, they're all so very different, and they make up you. Germline cells are just the gametes. So we've got here sperm and egg. Nothing much more to them than that. I did say two seconds ago that the, even though the smooth muscle cell, the nerve cell, and the ciliated epithelial cell were so different, the somatic cell, but they're so different. But why are these so different? That's through this process here called cellular differentiation. Now, cellular differentiation is the process by which a cell develops more specialized functions by turning or expressing certain genes. And when I say expressing certain genes, another way to think about that is turning them on or off. Imagine you, each one of your cells has hundreds of thousands of different light switches and whatever combination of light switches you have makes a different set of lights appear. Well, it's the same idea here is a different set of genes expressed. Now the original genetic code in each of these cells is the same. So if I look at the diagram on the right here, my neuron and my epithelial cell contain the exact same DNA. In the neuron cell, I've activated the green section and turned off the rest. In the epithelial section, I've turned off the green section, and I turned on the red section, but I haven't turned on everything else. Okay? The human body is made up of so many specialized cells that perform specific functions. So to just to say this is very on the surface is this simple, it really, really isn't. Okay? Specialized cells have a specific structure, specific functions, specific biomedical proper biochemical properties, sorry. That means like what cell uh, what enzymes are produced. What proteins are found on the surface of the cell? What proteins are produced on the inside of the cell? There's so many things that are so different between each of these different types of cells. Specialized cells arise from differentiation of unspecialized cells. And these unspecialized cells, we would call stem cells. Now, there's different types of stem cells. 
the same styles, they're all in different places. It makes a lot of sense when you actually unpack the logic behind it. If you are an embryo, and I'm talking, you've just been fertilized four to five days old. And you're still a little bundle of cells, right? There's nothing to you. There's no facial structure. There's nothing there. You're just a ball of cells. Well, you still have to produce everything inside the human body. Okay, every single organ, all the skin, all the blood vessels, all the nervous cells, all the muscle. There's so much still to go on there. Those cells that go on to develop these have to be really unspecialized. That means they're not too specific yet. Not too many specific genes are turned on. We would describe these cells in a biological sense as pluripotent. So all the genes in the embryonic stem cells, as I've just mentioned, can be switched on. So these cells can differentiate into any cell type required. These cells also have the ability to differentiate into all cell types that make up the organism. But our embryonic stem cells don't stay around forever. We have another type of stem cell that are called adult stem cells or tissue stem cells. Now, this is a bit of a misnomer. The term adult, they don't appear when you're 18. An adult stem cell actually appears very late on in terms of fetal development. They're there. They're inside all the different tissues. OK, so tissue stem cells we describe as multipotent. They're slightly less different, uh, slightly more differentiated or slightly less specific. They've had slightly more switches turned on. Adult or tissue stem cells are found in small numbers pretty much all over the body. You can find some in the brain, bone marrow, skin, skeletal muscle. But these cells in particular only give a limited range of cell types. If I look at um, blood stem cells, for example, so anything in the white blood cell range or anything in the red blood cell range or platelets, they can only be found in bone marrow. These bone marrow stem cells cannot create nerve cells because they're just too specific. Okay, they can't reverse backwards. So in this scenario, adult stem cells, we'd say, are multipotent. And now just as a bit of a disclaimer, I said that uh, adult stem cells can't be reversed backwards. They can't do that naturally. Okay, there's a, something called induced pluripotent stem cells. Okay, I'm not even going to touch them with the barge pole today, um, but they are something that exists, and you can make multipotent stem cells become pluripotent stem cells. Ultimately, the issue with adult stem cells is that they can't they need to be replaced if you've damaged that bit of tissue let's just say for the sake of argument i've lost my arm in an accident i can't just regrow my arm okay so when the stem cells have gone they're gone stem cells for clarity's sake is a definition for you here are unspecialized cells that have the ability to reproduce and differentiate into a diverse range of specialized cells so we have to talk about Ultimately, where do stem cells go? If a stem cell is replicating to make new cells, wouldn't they just run out? Well, ultimately, when stem cells, if they go through mitosis, you make two daughter cells. So at the very top here, I've got my one stem cell. It divides. I make a specialized cell and a stem cell. Divides again and again and again. And I've still got, after every single division, one, one stem cell. After these uh, four different um, mitosis cycles, I've now gained four specialized cells which they can go and replace dead or damaged cells throughout the entirety of life. My stem cell is still renewed as well. I still have one stem cell, but I have to make sure I don't lose that stem cell because then you've lost all your stem cells. OK, so we have to renew and differentiate every single cycle of mitosis in these somatic stem cells. So we've got stem cells. These are great. These are awesome, right? We can do lots of things with these that can help the world around us. Now, with the SQ, we like to look at therapeutic and research uses of stem cells. We have to be very careful when we go around how we word these. So therapeutic ultimately involves repair or damaged repair, sorry, of damaged or diseased organs. You're quite often asked to give an example by the SQA. A good example is corneal repair. So if the back of your eyes damaged, you can deal or the front of the eyes damaged, sorry, you can deal with that. You can treat neurological conditions such as Parkinson's, Alzheimer's. This last one, the regeneration of damaged skin, is not the same as skin grafts. Okay, the SQA would never accept skin graft as an answer because in theory, I could take a skin graft from the top of my leg and place it on my face. I'm not using stem cells. I've just reorganized it. So we have to be really specific how we word that. We have to say the regeneration of damaged skin, not just making skin grafts. Research involves using stem cells being used as model cells to study disease or being used for drug testing. Okay, so stem cells from embryo can self-renew and under the right conditions in a lab, they can can basically stay around forever. Stem cell research provides information on how cell processes work, such as cell growth, differentiation, and gene regulation. Okay, so these are two good sets of answers here that the SK would be really happy to hear about. 
They'll also ask about ethical uses as well. Now, yeah, it's understandable um, when you destroy an embryo, that stirs up ethical conversations. Okay, I mean, you might be using them for good, but ultimately you're doing something along the lines of ending a life. Now, I'm not going to make any assumptions about where you lie on that. That's for you to decide as an individual who's listening just now. But you have to take into consideration that there will be some people that are stirred up and they're not really happy about the use of stem cells. And you have to understand why that's the case. So this brings us finally on to cancer cells. OK, now normally all cells love the life. OK, they typically go for a checkpoint in mitosis. You don't just go through mitosis. It doesn't just happen in the same way. I personally live in Scotland. If I tried to fly to America, I ain't getting there without some checkpoints. OK, I have security in an airport in Britain. I'd have to go through uh, customs when I got to America. OK, I don't just turn up and I'm there. Woohoo, here's me. OK, cancer cells do not listen to those checkpoints. They don't care. They're going straight through. OK, these guys do not um, understand the signals and they just divide excessively produ to produce a mass of abnormal cells. Now, ca uh, cancer cells typically have a couple of characteristics that make them different from normal somatic cells. Cancer cells just continue to divide excessively and they produce a mass of abnormal cells. These abnormal cells don't naturally follow the pathways or the signals that regulate the pathway. When the mass is formed, it's known as a benign tumour. Now, a benign tumour doesn't move. It's kind of in its place. These cancerous cells do not respond to normal regulatory signals that would instruct them to stop. They just keep going. The surface molecules of these cells, they normally hold them together. Sometimes they're not enough to keep them in place. So some of the cancer cells might detach and go off in a clump, but they're still dividing abnormally. This causes a secondary cancer to appear, or is also known as a malignant tumour. So with that, that brings us to the end of the first episode in the Higher Human Biology series, okay, looking at division and differentiation in stem cells. Okay, If you want to watch any more of these videos, they're in a playlist. Okay, They're going to be generated over time. Um, as well, make sure if you are a student who's looking into the Higher, into the higher Human course, Make sure if you've got any questions on this, you can ask your teachers in school. Do not think I'm the be-all and end-all of biology. I'm just here to give you a quick guide for each of the subunits as we're going through. That's everything from me. I will catch you guys in the next video.